Hello everyone, welcome to a Foreigner Farming in the Philippines. So we've got Mike down here. The feed, the the pigs were making a real ruckus like five minutes ago and so Tatai and Nario are going up to get feed to feed them because I wanted to I wanted to take a video with Mike here, but they were being too noisy. So we've got a little break here. Uh, they'll be they'll be fired up again as soon as they see the wheelbarrow heading down this way. Uh, but we've got a few minutes here. Mike and I were just talking about these pens here and how it uh, it seems deeper to the naked eye than it does on video. Yeah, it does in real life. It, it looks a lot a lot deeper than I imagine. Yeah. And amazingly enough, we were discussing the smell as well, which is basically non-existent. No. I mean, I've been around a lot of piggeries in my life, and you know our a mile before you get to the piggery. Yeah, our piggery before, when it had the cement floors, you could smell it. And, it, and you know, even though I we're raising pigs, it doesn't mean I want to live next to a piggery. Yeah. And that was the biggest uh, impetus to get away from the cement. I mean, there were a lot of reasons, but the smell, uh, we visited a piggery that had the rice holes in it. Yeah. And the edge of the piggery was 10 feet away from this guy's house. And he was a he was a retired sea captain. And he had, you know, for Filipinos, he had money. Right. And he built a nice two-story house. And it was 10 feet away from the piggery. Yeah. And when we pulled up, I'm thinking, man, this guy's got, you could tell he had money. Yeah. And... You know, this guy's well healed, but he's put his piggery right next to his house. What was he thinking? And then we got out and we walked up and we're walking around and there's no smell. There you go. So there you go. And so I, I kind of picked his brain a little bit, looked around online some, uh, and now we have it. And it doesn't matter which way is the wind blowing, yeah. we can't smell a piggery. Yeah, I mean... There's just enough so you know that there's something here. Yeah, it's, it's like somebody, you're around somebody who hasn't taken a bath in a while. That's yeah. kind of, yeah. But, but before, I mean, when Marcel and I were pressure washing these <laughs> cement pens out, we would start at one end and four hours later we're done. And by the time you get back empty at the, the tank. Yeah, and empty the tank. And by the time you get back, the pen that we did four hours ago, had crap and, and pee in it and it stunk. Yeah. And so you could never get it to where there was no smell. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, but now Jen just goes around for thirty minutes every day with basically a pooper scooper. Yeah. And and don't you don't you find normally in in heat like this today it's nice, but normally in heat like this, the urine it smells worse than the crap ever does in it. It it, it can it and it's out in the sun and it starts to cook. Now that we're down here, I'm actually going to spy on Tata and Nario and make sure that they're, they're uh, giving the rations as instructed. Yeah, guys, you're just going to have to put up with the noise. These pigs are hungry.
this out here got four scoops, which is four times as much as everyone else because these little piglets are pulling her down. And even with a even with a high ration like that, she's still losing weight. Petunia's mad. <laughs> Petunia's got an attitude. She is the sweetest pig, though. You see how her ear, her ears are kind of back a little bit like that. They're, they're kind of back against her neck. Yeah. That, that's her begging look. And if you look at her face, she looks like a puppy who's just who's begging for a treat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't help it. She's spoiled and she knows it. She's a good pig. Famous. That's the famous petunia. Oh, well, they're fighting it down there. Well, yeah, it, it's only those down on the end there that are going. Well, come on, come on, come on. Thirsty pig. Which uh, which pen was the little piglet climbed underneath the wall? This is this one right down here. It's funny. It's almost like Jen. While I'm thinking about it, I can tell by the sound those chick, the small chickens are making over there, that they're either hungry or thirsty. So either either one. The small ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, those those small ones should have as much free food in front of them all the time. Okay. Uh, don't let them run out. Well, you you could uh, free feed them, but feed the others a little bit less. I know you're worried about them kicking the feed out on the ground. It's not going to go to waste. The other chickens will eat it. Uh, this is the this is the pen here that she was going under with that little piglet. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, some rice holes have been uh, kicked up underneath the wall there to to, to like kind of to keep them in, yeah. Wait until you got back over with yeah. the camera before it went under. This is our, is this the newest litter? I think this is the newest litter. Uh, she had 13. Uh, the rice holes were a little high in this. She did uh, lay on two. We did lose two out of this litter, but she still got 11, and she's doing well. Hey, on uh, your payday video, the pig that was just screaming its head off, did you? I don't know which pen it was. I, I was videoing, or else I would have been making the mad dash down here as well. So she got off of she, it? They, they got her off of it. It, was, it could have been one in this pen or any of those three other sows up it's, there that had pigs. It sounded like bloody murder. <laughs> you know, and that's, you know... People wonder why is the why is the caretaker house right next to the piggery? People were suggesting you know we put it we put it up on a plateau. There's a reason it's right next to the piggery. Most of the time, sometimes, who knows what percentage of the time, you can hear a little piglet sque squealing because its mom stepped on it or she's laying on it, and you can come over and slap her around a little bit and get her off of it. But you know, and sometimes it's, it's just right, and she lays on it and it can't. Yeah. It can't yell. But on those occasions when you can hear it, you need to be able within five or ten steps to be over here and take care of it. Yeah. And that's why the caretaker house is right and next to it. Not to mention theft. And, and as a guard as well. I mean, there's, there's, there's more than just one reason. Right, Red Red? You finally put down that fishing pole, huh? Did you catch any fish yet? Where's your fish at, Red Red? <laughs> Ah, uh, so Kansing redid the. I I will redo it again because it's strong again. 
it's wrong again? Mm -hmm. It's still not what you told her to do, huh? Yeah. I told her this is a post and then turn around here. Yeah, right? yeah. But he turned around the post. She turned around the post. Oh. Ayok, tandugan akong kamungay, ha? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just made a video of even Maricel has a hard time uh, clearly communicating to the workers exactly what so we I want did, done. I, I already uh, show her how to... That's the demonstration? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, love, the poles aren't big enough? No, I will make another pole. Oh, okay. This is the new dragon fruit experiment. You'll uh, like it. I like dragon fruit. It's not as sweet as you think it should be. Well, Mike, was, we were over at Mike and Bonnie's, and that's where we got these dragon fruit. <laughs> And he, he was saying it's kind of like a pomegranate. Yeah, that's probably a good, good explanation. I've actually never had one, so I have no idea. In my mind, I thought it was really sweet. And it's not sickening sweet. It's, it's, they're good. It's refreshing if it's refrigerated and it's a hot day. Yes. 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 Well, the price is just astronomical. Uh, really high price. I think I think Michael was saying something like around 400 pesos a kilo. Wow. I think they might be cheaper in the U.S. Uh, we we got some in the U.S. That was at the Asian store. Four dollars a pound is what that would work out to. Well, that's probably right. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, for here, that's really expensive. Well, yeah. We didn't get a lot because. I never tried it, so May didn't want to get a lot. Yeah. She likes it, but mm -hmm. but not. Didn't want to eat it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'd buy it again. Are you helping, Red? Are you holding that log down? You're a good man, Red. <laughs> I don't care what your mom says about you. You're a pretty good man. How are you, Red? This is cool. Yeah, I saw it okay. when we got here. It was a steep bank going down. It's pretty gentle right here. That's why we were at one time. I was considering extending the piggery out up to that rice field there. Yeah, but uh, we've got plenty to do. I think I think you're on the really good thing with the fattening pens. Yeah, you get that guaranteed buyback from Purina. How can you go wrong? Yeah, how can you go wrong? And the thing is with the piglets. I mean, we've sold a lot of piglets. Of all the piglets that we've raised here, we've got about 70 now that we haven't sold. And, and we could, you know, turn these, uh, we, we, we would sell them eventually. But the thing is, is that it's seasonal for well, the piglets. And it's seasonal for the lechon. Fiestas, birthdays, whatever, and you never know. I mean, yeah. So you can be sitting on pigs like we are right now and not have a guaranteed sale. Whereas if we bring those fattening pins all the way down to right there well that's the nice thing is you can still sell them as you go right we can still you but know the ones stuck with them in right the but you know when the when the decision is made is okay that pig is too big for lechon now it's a fattening pig you know to market weight yeah then they'll, they'll just stay in these pens and i'm thinking we can run about uh 300 pigs a year to market weight yeah and uh, just that many pigs will basically double our profit. Oh well, yeah, you just, it's cash flow. I mean, yeah, just... and it's cash flow. Because when you're, you know, when you've got an 80, 90,000 peso a month feed bill like we do, uh, it's nice to have kind of some money coming in on a regular basis because uh, the feed supplier doesn't want to hear our story yeah. about we can't pay for the bill. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to hear that. He wants his money when he delivers it, so. Yeah. It's, you know, it, having a, a, a guaranteed sale will uh, eliminate the need for having 100 or 200,000 pesos laying around for the times when we can't sell piglets and we don't have any cash flow. 